Hi everyone, welcome to my new YouTube channel built by Ben. In this series I'll be going through some carpentry skills, some hacks and techniques that some of you might want to learn. So the whole point of this YouTube channel for me is to spread a little bit of my knowledge that I've gained over the years as a carpenter, whether it's you know a tool that I use or a trick that I use to help people do things a lot easier. And maybe you'll comment below and show me how to do things easier. That's all about learning and um, sharing our little tips and tricks. This will be a series of short videos so that we can show off some of the tools that we use um, and also help you guys to use them tools. The project I'm building at the moment is a TV wall, a media wall um, for a friend of mine. Um, we're going to be building it out of moisture resistant MDF. So I'm going to take you through the steps um, to plan, cut, assemble and fit a TV unit. Hopefully that's helpful to some of you. Without further ado, let's get on with the project. So this here is a rough sketch of what me and the customer have come up with. Uh, just very rough at the moment because uh, we didn't want to spend too much time planning it. He's not quite sure what he wants to do over the top of the TV and down the sides of the TV here. Um, we're probably going to make these units up here so that we can put some adjustable shelves in there so if he ever does decide to change his mind then he can just change them about and swap them about um, it's going to be completely customizable um, even after the build um, so we're just going to start with these bottom three units um, we know that we've got 3.3 meters overall um, and this is how we're going to build the units leaving a gap of 200 mil around the side for some lights that we're putting in later. Um, we've changed this measurement to 500 deep now so we can crack on and start cutting all of the panels for these units. So the first thing we want to do is we want to split these three units up to equal the full width that we want them to achieve. So 3.2 is the width we're trying to get to We've decided to leave a bigger gap around the outside for the lighting area. Um, so 3.2 divided by 3 comes roughly in at 1066. That's in millimetres. So each of these units will need to try to get them to be as close to 1066 as possible. And when they're all bolted together, they're all sitting on their plinth, they'll all equal 3.2. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to sit them up on a 50mm plinth off of the carpet so that the doors have got room to open, they don't scuff the carpet and it also just gives it a bit of a nicer look, um, makes it look almost like it's floating um, rather than it sitting down on the floor. Um, so the plinth underneath will be built roughly about 50mm short of the edges of the unit. Um, we want the units to equal 600 millimetres off of the floor. So allowing for the 50 mil plinth and the 22 mil worktop that we're going to have on there. Um, we want to try and make that five hundred and thirty-eight millimetres. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these side panels at 538 by 500. 500 is the depth away from the wall that we've agreed on. Um, the most base units are that sort of size. Um, you can vary them depending on what the customer's use for them is. Um, but today we're going for 500. So a standard sheet of MDF is 1220 wide and 2440 long. So we know that we can get two of our side panels out of the height of that sheet. So what we want to do to reduce the waste is pick your smallest size, which is the 500, because we still know we can get two lots of 538 out of the height. So we want to come along here, mark at 500 mil, And that's our first cut and then we'll get our two 538s out of that piece. So for these cuts we're going to be using the Festool track saw, it's a TS55 plunge saw 
haven't been paid by Festool to do this or anything. It's just the tools I've ended up buying, putting on the van. Um, Festool's obviously a very good make. Um, I've enjoyed using it, it makes everything so much faster. Um, so I'll show you how it works. So these are the Festool track guides. Um, just a pretty simple piece of aluminium. You've got a ridge here that the saw runs along. This nylon strip on here keeps any break out from coming up because the saw moves up this way. So the nylon strip keeps it down. Make sure that there's no splinters stick up in the air when you're sawing through things. So this is the Vestal plunge saw. Sits on this track like so, slides along. You can use clamps for these as well. If you're doing something a bit more expensive, something with a finished face on there, then you can clamp this down to make sure there's absolutely no chance it's gonna go anywhere. But usually it's pretty good. You can put pressure on it. It's not gonna go side to side. So crack on and get this one cut. So I'm just using a basic Henry Hoover for this. It's got a rubber adapter on the end there. Fits snug into the back of the plunge saw. So we're gonna set the depth to 20 mil. And what that does is only lets the saw plunge down to 20 mil below the surface. So by the time it's on that track, you're never gonna go too far under where you want to go. also saves your bench. So, now that that's all set up, I'll get my air defenders on and we'll make the first cut. And there we have it. Nice clean cut, almost leaves a sandy edge to this thing, it's great. Um, the side of this is also very good, the rough side as such, ready for the next cut as well. So, what we'll do is we'll continue to cut all of the side panels and get them all ready, and then we'll go through, we'll cut the bottom panel, we'll cut the back of the unit, and we'll also cut the top rail that holds up the worktop. So, enjoy the footage. So now we want to use that measurement from earlier, the 538, which was the height of our base units. And what I tried to do here, line my marks up with the solid part of my bench. As the track saw goes through, neither this part or this part will fall anywhere, because then you get horrible broken corners. It keeps everything neater. It's easier to cut as well. So what you can do here <clears throat> is put either a scrap piece or another piece that you've got to cut up top to hold the top of the trail. Keeps it all nice and sturdy, less chance of it rocking as your saw comes past the end points.
Okay, so that's all the sides cut. Keep them two bits of scrap there. They might come in handy for something later when we're building the plinths or you know, even just some packers to fix it to the wall once we're at the customer's house. So always worth keeping your little bits aside. Um, now we'll work out the size that the top and the back has to be. Um, we'll start cutting then. So if you can imagine that these are your two sides of your cabinet, obviously going to be a lot further apart, but for the sake of the video, we'll set them up like this. Um, this line here is going to be the bottom of the unit and this will be the top line of the unit. So the top rail that comes between these two will sit below the surface of that so that we can keep the final measurement that we wanted from top to bottom the same. Obviously, if you then go and put a top on the top of that, then we're 18 mil different. Um, so what we're gonna do now is obviously work out the complete width that we wanted, which was 1066, 1066 millimeters, minus two lots of 18, which will then give us the space that we want in between. So the 1066, minus the 36 mil, which is two of these, the 18 mil each, um, comes to 1030. So the back of our unit, the bottom of our unit, and the top rail are all gonna be 1030 long. So it's good to keep that in mind.